Right now, I'm going to call Steve, maintenance guy, and let him know what is going on. Hello. Hey. Um, okay, so yeah, I, I think it's gonna be an easier fix than maybe what it looks like. So maybe what you should do is go get bags of sand, some topsoil, a few bags of that just to throw on top. Go get that material. Things aren't going right. And it's a good thing. I mean, all businesses is fixing problems. If you have problems, it means you're growing, you're progressing. If you're not dealing with problems and learning how to overcome them, you're stagnant in life. I won't grow up on continued growth, not only in our business, but personally, spiritually, whatever. And it gets frustrating, but ultimately, my responsibility. And that's the way I take it. Ultimately, it's my responsibility. So if this guy didn't have the proper materials, if he didn't have the proper training, it was something that I was overlooking in, in our system of onboarding training. We are going to have to change our, our onboarding as far as training, which we've been working on. It works, but me checking in to make sure that everyone's up to standard. And so that's got to be an integral part of everything, every aspect of the business. Like I need to know every single day that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. That just needs to be an integral part of everything we do. My standards are high, and if they're subpar, that's like, that's not what people are paying for. They're paying for excellence, and it kills me like it. it <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're gonna go to Ewing Irrigation up in Anaheim. They're one of our vendors, and they carry a lot of the pond stuff that we need. So, that's where we're headed right now. what we use uh, for patching. This is actually a six inch cover tape and it's similar to patching a bike inner tube. And that's what I did growing up these days. I think kids probably just change the inner tube out, but I still like patching holes. It's a lot cheaper than a whole new inner tube. So it's just a two part thing. Put on the prime, put it on the liner, let it dry, take this stuff, cut out the piece you want, take the backing off, put it on and it welds tough. I mean, it is coming stronger than the liner. So there's an area where the customer will cut open the liner and match it. It's gonna be better than ever. Hey Steve, uh, are you guys still picking that stuff up? Yeah, we're literally like right at Depot, pulling up to Depot right now. We set it the rest of the pond water out of there. I'm uh, at Ewing Anaheim right now and um, I will meet you there. Oh, sounds great. Okay, perfect. All right. See you in a little while. All right, cool. Yeah, Thanks, man. Nice Bye. Bye. But what was going on was our office manager took on onboarding the maintenance and making sure that they have everything and he's on vacation and um, finding out these guys are unprepared. So we're just kind of reinventing the wheel as far as training and onboarding. We're going to start a new program. It's going to be a little more rigorous, make sure that every truck has every single thing they're supposed to have. And like Steve just mentioned, he's like, oh, I should have had my tools with me it's like no no one should ever have their own tools we have all the tools that we're gonna need to go through the tool bags make sure everyone has everything that they're supposed to have and that they're clean and put away at the end of each day and stuff doesn't get lost and that's the tricky thing about growth is you get more and more extended in your responsibilities and you think that things are being handled and you find out they're not and it's really frustrating. So that is a process that's broken that needs to get fixed and um, you know, people need to be held accountable. And this situation, I'm kind of being held accountable because this new guy, Steve, is putting so much effort into it and he's being really cool and patient and uh, I feel like I'm failing him because he's been put into some situations that are uncomfortable. So we need to fix that. This is someone that he had a leak problem. Uh, they did something kind of unorthodox, which unfortunately we see that a lot. There are standards in building ponds, but I would say the majority of what I see are outside of those standards. So we have to fix a lot of, a lot of stuff. So this is actually going to be a relatively 
really easy fix. So, um, what we're going to do is we need to get this water level up high, right? What we need to do is the outside of the pond needs to be like the outside of the pond everywhere else, right? So all we have to do is fill this area in mm -hmm. all the way to here. Yeah. And then all we have to do, patch, patch. Then rock this up. Yeah. Done. Yeah. While this is empty, this thing should be cleaned. Okay, so um, what we did is we cleaned this area right here, and, um, and then we took our, our uh, tape primer, and you always want to get the surrounding area so none of the patch is going to fall on a dry spot, and then you actually let this dry first before you put the patch on. Take our scissors. And we're gonna cut some of the patch here. What I like doing is I like cutting the corners off because uh, that's a real easy place to get, yeah, get lifted up. A round patch. Not too big of a patch. You don't want to go too small either because um, we want to adhere the patch to a fair amount of the area around the hole and then definitely want something nice and flat behind the hole so we've got a nice flat rock right here if uh, if we're doing something long when we're doing splicing we'll actually get like a, a 2x10 um, and because uh, we've spliced in big pieces of liner before backing off Really important to not get any folds. Once this stuff, once this hits that, that's it. So I usually practice a few times on my patch and make sure it's gonna go on how I want it to go on with no folds. So you start from one side, kind of work your way to the other side. Then what you can do take a nice soft smooth rock and just kind of roll it on there. And that's on for life. When we do repairs and pond cleanouts, this is one of our tanks right here. There's just goldfish, so uh, normally we would put a net on top of this because koi will jump. And then that's some residual water right there, so we can fill the pond back up with aged water. If it's too dirty, we'll just use a small amount of that, but we always put flocculent in. The flocculant binds the suspended particles that's making the the water cloudy and it'll clear up really quick. These guys are, they're, they're patching. Uh, I did one little patch and they're patching the other piece. It's all about quality control, making sure things are going right. And, um, you know, it's a training type of situation and uh, the construction crews out doing what they're doing, they're aces and um, these guys will be aces real soon because I'll make sure every single thing is perfect. <laughs>